Good morning. How are you all today? Um, I'm very pleased to um, introduce one of our own students and now our clinical coordinator, uh, Devin Taylor, who is going to sing our national anthem. can all be seated. I would say if anybody can do that, they can do, any, they can do anything. And I think I surprised Devin because uh, she's been running around coordinating this today. You okay there? Okay, good. <laughs> so I want to welcome you to our fourth annual white coat ceremony. My name is Kathleen Rourke, Dr. Kathleen Rourke, and I am the Interim Dean of the College of Health Sciences here at SUNY Polytechnic. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the White Coat Ceremony. It is a uh, very special ceremony that recognizes the time when our family nurse practitioner students, or our FNP students, move or bridge from primarily being in the classroom into the clinics and the healthcare facilities. This is when they integrate all their classroom learning into patient care. Of course, they are under supervision, lots of supervision, with um, not only their, uh, their faculty members, but also preceptors. Now, um, fear not, they do have a lot of supervision, but also understand that these are the top of the top nurses. They uh, have very high GPAs when they come here, so they're already very great nurses. Before they leave our program, they will complete 720 clinical hours, approximately 250 hours above the required minimum. We prepare them to be skilled and competent family nurse practitioners. What happens while these students are here is truly amazing. I think they're often amazed themselves with what, what the transformation is. And the transformation occurs not only in the clinics, but in the classroom because of our fantastic faculty, full-time and part-time faculty. So before we move on with the program, I want to introduce you to our faculty. Not of, all of them are here. So I'm going to ask the faculty to stand when I call their name. Um, Dr. Janice Sakuchi, uh, Professor Cindy Grabsky, Professor uh, Shelley Brennan Vicolo, Dr. Uh, Louise, I'm up here and I'm forgetting everything, Dr. Louise Dean Kelly, and uh, one of our part-time faculty, Professor Randy Schrader, and our clinical coordinator, who we could not do without, um, Devin Taylor. 
And this is only a sampling of all our faculty. We have lots of part-time and full-time faculty. Next, I'd like our FNP, our Family Nurse Practitioner students, to stand up and turn around and recognize all these people that are in the audience whose love, dedication, support, their, uh, their significant others, their family, their friends who have come here to recognize them today. I'd like them to stand up, turn around, and applaud those people that are gonna get you through this program. Now you can sit down, because without these people that are here today, you would not get through the program and your faculty. And the last uh, group of people I'd like to recognize is our college association. Um, this is the second year that our college association has funded this event. And uh, as the college and the family nurse practitioner program, I'd like to thank them for the funding that they've given us, the generous support that they've given us. Um, and uh, I'd like to just give them a round of applause for their funding. Now it is truly my honor and privilege to introduce such a significant role model for us as women in the college and for the university to introduce our president, Dr. Grace Wong. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dean Roque. Uh, good morning. I want to extend a very warm welcome to our uh, families, friends, and loved ones who are here to support our students. Thank you so much for everything you have done, and I hope you feel thrilled that we are here today to celebrate our students' significant achievement. And I am personally very thrilled to join you here in this uh, celebration for our students to have their white coats and start their academic career in a new journey. And so many of you know that this is one of the best programs in the country. We started our nursing program back in 1974. A lot of people don't know, and they think we are one of the best, uh, best kept secrets in the region and in the state of New York. And I will say, we do not want to be a secret. Actually, we want to be known that we are not only very good, but also uh, have a tremendous history in this program. And so today, 90 of our students will receive their white coats, and we are excited that you, you have come across the, uh, New York State and across the country to join us today to honor our student. And uh, so while we are doing that, I will say it's an uh, understatement to say our student will not get where they are today without our outstanding faculty members uh, and also the staff members, uh, without your efforts, uh, without your dedication, and every day to look at how do we provide better learning experience for our students. So I would like to ask our faculty members and also program coordinator to stand up and be recognized. And some of you probably know that SUNY Poly in the U.S. News and uh, World Report for 2020 was ranked number 11 for uh, the, the region. And also that make SUNY Poly the, the second highest ranked public universities in the North region. And for this particular program, actually for the nursing program, not only the tremendous history we have, but also the quality and the rigor of the program have made it very uh, highly recognized across the country. And just uh, recently, the registernurse.org ranked our master program in uh, uh, family nurse practitioner as number eight across the country. So that makes ours the top 10 programs in that, for that program. So 
you should be really proud of what where you are today and with the association with the SUNY Poly as we continue to move this institution forward and continue to realize the dreams for our students through education, through provide you the best knowledge and skills. And particularly for this class, should know that you are among the best of the best. Right now we have about 230 students in this program. And in the fall 2019, the, uh, the Family Nurse Practitioner Program has, this class has an average GPA of 3.63. So you should be very proud of what you have achieved. And we are at the time that the healthcare industry is rapidly changing and rapidly transforming. And of course, you are facing a career that's uh, not only impactful, but also highly demanding. And so I commend you for what you have chosen. And with today's ceremony, you are starting a new journey. You're starting a new journey to impact many of the people that in our community community and the, who, the people we know, the people we don't know through your career. And so think about how, how many lives you're going to improve based on your career and based on your, the knowledge and the skills you are gaining here at the SUNY Poly. So congratulations to you all for achieving this significant milestone of your academic career. And I hope that you will carry your white coats with pride and with pride as you progress in your profession, as you progress and uh, for, for, your, uh, for you as an individual, for your career, and also as you carry this pride for SUNY Poly as we move forward. So congratulations to you all. And I also want to congratulate all the families and friends for being here today and for joining us in celebrating this uh, significant milestone for our students. And so now it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce today's keynote speaker, Dr. Mary Doma, uh, Dr. Mary Ann Doma. She is a retired senior associate dean of Hofstra University and also a founder of Hofstra University School of Nursing. Dr. Doma is also a professor emeritus of SUNY's very own Stony Brook University with 40 years of experience working both as a nurse educator and also a nurse practitioner. Dr. Doma is a national nursing leader. She was appointed by the president to serve on the Defense Health Board Medical Ethics sub Subcommittee, making recommendations on the Department of Defense's health service issues. She's also the president of National Organization of Nurse Practitioner Faculties, secretary of the Fellows of American Association of Nurse Practitioners, and also a commissioner of accreditation for the American Nurses Credentialing Center. We are thrilled to have you join us, Dr. Doma. And so without further ado, please join me to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Doma. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak today at this very important occasion. It's truly an honor and I'm really humbled by it. Um, all those things that the president wrote out, read are lies, so just know that they're, <laughs> some of them are true. Um, I wanted, I was looking up white coats and the origin of white coats and our medicine colleagues in the 1880s um, started wearing white coats for a barrier because of infection. And it's since been considered a profession, a symbol of professionalism, respect, but they also wanted um, patients to, to know that because they wanted to result, they, 
in patient obedience. Now that sounds like the medical profession, they want patient obedience. Of course, they want obedience of everybody, but that's just, it started way back. So in the 1950s and 60s was a time of social, social change and economic turmoil. There were many communities of people who needed health care and were not receiving it. Does that sound familiar? Nurse practitioners can meet the challenge of increasing access to care. Post-Vietnam War, the medical profession came to nursing and said they were developing a role and would we like to fill it. That role was called the physician's assistant. You may have heard the term physician extender. It's kind of like hamburger helper. And of course, nursing said, no thank you. Mid-village, uh, mid-level provider actually, the only people who use that are truly the DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency. And I will tell you that our national organization, uh, the Association for Nurse Practitioners who meet with government officials, the White House, et cetera, are in talks to get them to change that to neutral provider language. Dr. Loretta Ford, who is considered the mother of nurse practitioners, or the Florence Nightingale of nurse practitioners, um, she th believed that nurses ideally could provide hol a holistic approach to healthcare and empower patients to take responsibility for their health and optimize their health. Her vision was, and still is today, that NPs have the ability to assess, diagnose, evaluate, treat health problems, as well as provide um, prescribed medications. At the time, there was, when Dr. Ford started her program in pediatric NPs in the University of Colorado, as well as here, when one of your faculty and I, Dr. Louise Dean Kelly and I, went to school for nurse practitioners, we were in the first class at Stony Brook, there was a great concern in the nursing community that we were going, going in the direction of medicine, that we were going to give up being nurses. We did not have the support of the New York State Nurses Association at the time, and there were some nurses who were very skeptical about us and called nurse practitioners, you just want to be junior doctors. Today's workforce shares overlapping knowledge and skills, and no one profession owns any particular aspect of care. Nurse practitioners have been providing high-quality, cost-effective care with high levels of patient satisfaction. And there is research to document that. And for any patient who's ever been to a nurse practitioner, and for those of you who have started doing some clinical evaluations, histories and physicals, the patients will say, nobody ever did that before. You're really thorough. And that's the truth. That's the truth. So we cannot, Dr. Ford said, we cannot run and ask permission every time we want to do something new. My comment to you is, be confident in yourself. I know that you have an outstanding program here. And I've been an educator and a nurse practitioner for over 40 years. But you know more than you think you do. You may not think that now because you're a little nervous, you don't have self-confidence, but believe me, you know more than you think. And there's always gonna be something that you feel you don't know. And that's why learning is lifelong learning. I don't feel with my years as a nurse practitioner that I know everything. And actually, it was interesting one day when um, I said to a patient, oh, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna be looking something up. I hope, you, you know, and he said, uh, I said, I wanna, my line was, I just want to make sure I didn't overlook something. You know, not that I didn't know something, but, and he, and he said, you know, I'm glad you're doing that. I'm glad you, you know, you don't say you know everything. So have confidence in yourself. Organizations advocate for change, and members actively work for change. And you need to become members of the New York State 
uh, NP Association, the AAMP Association, and join the community of NPs. On New York State level, one of the first achievements that we got was prescriptive privileges. In New York, we have, and throughout the nation, we have one of the, the, the greatest breadth of ability to prescribe. We can prescribe anything. And other, it varies from state to state. We have the Modernization Act, which is a new act for full practice authority. So you can, I'm sure you've had that in school, once you have 36 hours, 3,600 hours full-time uh, practice, you essentially have full practice authority and are independent. So we've made changes, but there's more to do. On the federal level, I was president of the National Nurse um, Practitioner Faculties Organization and was privileged to meet with AARP who wanted to, had Senator Baucus from the uh, Senate who had the uh, Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare, in um, his committee, came to ARP and said, how about getting the APRNs, the Advanced Practice Nurses, in, and ask them, is there anything they want in the bill that can be slipped in? So mostly we were nurse practitioners there, nurse practitioner leaders, and there were um, clinical specialists, there were the anesthetists, there were the midwives. So she asked, does anybody have anything they'd like added to the bill? That's the New Yorker in me. So uh, I and one other person said, yeah. So she asked the clins back and she asked something. I don't even know what she asked, but everybody groaned and she said, no, that's too much. What do you want? And I said, I want neutral provider language. I want in the bill to change it from physician to provider. Everybody cheered, guess what? It got in the bill. So now, PAs can be reimbursed, uh, occupational therapists, millions more people have access to care because I happen to be the right person at the right time with the right idea. Um, so you can make that difference too. So I just wanted to mention, before I lead into some things about FMPs, why I went into nursing. When I went to school, there were a lot of people, in, I went to Duval College in Buffalo, and a lot of people, and even still now, people say, oh, when I was a little girl, I wanted to be a nurse. Well, I didn't know I wanted to be a nurse until I was 16. I decided, despite, I really wanted to make a difference in the lives of people. And the Vietnam War was going on, and it had nothing to do with politics, and I decided, you know, those young men and women, they deserve to have well-educated nurses taking care of them. So I went into the Navy. So my mission, uh, my passion has always been to make the difference in the lives of others and to practice at a higher level. As NP students, you may not realize it, but during your education, you may not have, this may not have happened now, it's not like a light bulb goes on, you begin to think differently. You begin to add, ask higher order questions, questions that are more complex and, and have data, greater depth of critical thinking. You begin to think like an NP. You may be in an RN role, working part-time or whatever, and you realize, I'm thinking like an NP, that I'm not as an RN anymore. Your outlook changes. When I was first uh, practicing, I used to say to my husband on the way out the door, I'm going to cure disease and infirmity without hurting anybody, I hope. Now, then somewhere over time, it, it, I'm going to optimize health. I don't know when it happened. Margaret Fitzgerald, who um, you might know as Peg Fitzgerald, is very well nationally known. And I had to really laugh because I was at one of her presentations and she said, good day in clinic is one without killing anyone. So people, nurse practitioners, no, no matter how experienced you are, you always have that edge that you want to take good care of your patients. Family nurse practitioners that you are, you have a challenge. You know why? Because those acute care NPs, they're patient, they have total control over those patients. They're not going anywhere. They have plenty of people around. You, you don't. 
The minute the patient walks out the door, you don't know what they're going to do. So I've always told my students, and I truly believe this myself, you need to develop a really good interpersonal relationship with your patient and their families. And that's the most important challenge to, to FNPs. Why? Because they leave and you don't know if they're going to do whatever. And they may come back and say, I've had patients say, oh, I didn't do this, and you're going to scream at me. And I'll say, well, at first, I don't scream. But secondly, whatever was, was let's move forward from, from today. And it lets them relax a little and open to hearing what the next steps are. Your, your care has to be mutually agreed on and incremental. So you just can't, you know, give somebody a medication and say, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be your hypertension, your diabetes is going to be controlled. Um, it has to be incremental. The patient has to buy into it. And there have been patients who told me things they've never told anybody else. And that's an amazing thing to happen. And it will happen to you too. I've told patients, um, I'm willing to work with you, with your diabetes. But you have to work hard, too, because I can't care more about you, more about your health than you. I have one patient who I'm just so excited about because uh, I, I'm a VA nurse practitioner, and I fought to get him. You're probably familiar. You see it on TV. The, um, the sensor, the Freestyle Libre sensor. I, we were able to get him that. He had a language barrier. He had a phobia event sticking his fingers. Well, guess what? In a period of several months, his hemoglobin A1C, which is his glucose, went from 11, which is very high, to 7. It was like, yes. But he did it. I helped him. So one of the other things is have courage and take risks. And as Dr. Dr. Ford says, we don't have to ask permission every time we want to do something new. You're smart, of course. You know, do, do I collaborate with physicians? There are times when I've said, you know, can I run this by you? I just want to find out if there's anything I overlooked. And they do that too. Collaboration has two meanings. One is a professional collaboration, which is what I'm talking about, and the other is regulatory, which I'm not going to talk about. One of the last things I want to speak to you about is self-care. Nurses take care of everybody else, but not themselves. If you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. And that, in practice, you can make mistakes, and we don't want that. My word to you is, and my recommendations, find ways to take care of yourself regularly, making time for things you enjoy, whether it's a monthly facial or an exercise class or meditation. But you know what? The fight isn't over. There's a lot more. I was at a meeting, and a couple very savvy senior nurse practitioner said, the young ones, they don't know all the, all the fights we had to fight. But you know what? There are other fights for you to fight. And I'm counting for you to do that. So Dr. Loretta Ford said, in those older days, we were the nurse, we were the lone rangers. Our work isn't done. You are the Lone Rangers of today and tomorrow. And as Loretta Ford would say, my name's Marianne Duma, and I approve this message. Thank you. Hello everyone, now it's the exciting time to actually don the white coats. So I'd ask the faculty to come up here to assist. Dr. Sakuchi will be giving out your 
um, will be saying your names. I'll be giving out the pins, and then we'll be helping to don your white coats. Please come up and give the card to um, Dr. Sakuchi, who will call your name, and then they will be donning your coats. Thank you. Tristan Sherritt. Baker. Jillian Peralt. Yahira Myers. Amanda Rosen. Megan Mahardy. Amanda Colabello. Angela Fromain. Rebecca Izo. Maha Gorayeb. <laughs> Renee Scaramuzino. <laughs> Samantha Austin. Canivri <laughs> Petaway. <laughs> Lucy Song. <laughs> Shaban Hecox. Chelsea Mantica <laughs> Brittany Cohen <laughs> Beth McConaughey Cassandra Becker. Christine Roback. Christine. 
Joshua Johnson. Brendan Dwyer. Sarah Colasides. Sarah Doyle. Cassandra Gilio. Laura Klaus. Lacey Deemer. Jillian Edwards. Sarah Diaz. Catherine Eberhard. Carolyn Getchell. Caitlin Turston. Hoishi Lin. Michelle Rushby. Sarah Highland. Bailey Payne. Shannon Strong. Kelly Forshi. <laughs> Ada Buka. <laughs> Gabrielle O'Reilly. Cynthia Santiago. Congratulations. Carrie Gray. Congratulations. Jennifer uh, Desjardins. My NATO <laughs> Emily McGovern <laughs> Dana Ernst. Kimberly Quinn. Congratulations. 
Alicia Sippel. Megan Putnam. Brittany Bonanza. Sedina Husik. Jessica Yearby. Rachel Venero. Eliza Hernandez. Joelle Evans. <laughs> Ramet Ghoul. Lynn Tran. Melanie DeWitt. Jennifer Greiner. Jennifer Brandon. Samantha Blank. Christine Normile. Shannon Phillips. Amy Bortnick. Ayuk Itang. Sarah Winkler. Now, if we could have all uh, faculty and nurse practitioner students please stand. And together we can read your card, the oath. Please read aloud now that you've donned your white coats. As a nurse dedicated to providing the highest quality care and services, I solemnly pledge that I will Consider the welfare of humanity and relief of suffering my primary concerns. Act in a compassionate and trustworthy manner in all aspects of my care. Apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. Exercise sound professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence. 
promote, advocate for, and strive to protect the health, safety, and rights of the patient. With this pledge, I accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the nursing profession. I take this oath voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am trusted by the public. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to SUNY Poly today for the white coat ceremony. And I'm so pleased to see you all in your white coats, though I must say there's a piece of me that wishes they were blue or green or some distinctive color so that when I, not as a provost, but as a patient, am in a clinical setting, I would know who the nurse practitioners are at a glance because those are the ones who care for all of us. And it's, if I can just speak for a moment as a patient, um, I've had the privilege of being cared for by nurse practitioners for the per past 30 years uh, who, who have an extraordinary practice in my small town and have cared for five generations of my family. And the idea of working with nurse practitioners has become so important to me as a patient that I'm constantly seeking out the nurse practitioners because I know that the difference between nursing and other professionals in the medical practice is really important to me as a patient. So thank you very much for the compassion that you bring and for letting SUNY Polytechnic help you turn your compassion and your passion into a career. And we're very grateful to have you and very proud that we can push or graduate nurse practitioners into the community and we're confident that you will carry the SUNY Polytechnic name far and wide. So thank you again for coming today and I know the last thing on the card says recessional class photo and then a reception and I certainly don't want to stand in the way of the reception. Thank you very much and congratulations to all the white coats. The reception is going to be over here. We're going to proceed off the stage, and the class photo is going to be on the steps um, in the in the hallway there. So once we proceed, process, if the students could be meet over in the uh, stairway there, so that we can take a class photo. Thank you all for coming, and have a great day.